Today we are going to study mathematics. In our last class, we discussed solid measuration. Today we are going to continue with solid measuration under sector and a cone. Sector and a cone. Here is an illustration of a sector. A sector is part of a circle. O A S B is describing a sector of a circle. A S B is the arc of that sector, and the arc is subtending an angle theta at the center. From O to A and from O to B is the radius of the circle, which is also the radius of this sector. We are representing it by the letter A in this case. Now this is a sector of a circle. Now we have immediately on my right a cone. Now looking at what we have here, this is the vertical point of the cone, V. Actually this cone is formed from this sector by folding this sector where the point A and B now meet as it is written here you will have this shape that is formed. The radius in the sector represented by L is representing the slant height of the cone while H is representing the vertical height and then R is the radius of the base of the cone. As you can see here, the radius of the base of the cone uh, is half of the diameter. And again, the base of the cone is a circular surface. It's a circle. In other words, we are saying it's a circle. Now, <coughs> this circle is made from the same folding of A up to the point B. So the arc A S B is the one that form the base circle of the cone. So D describes a cone. Now we are going to look at the first thing here A, area of sector OASB. And the area of sector OASB is calculated by using the formula theta over 360 degrees times pi L squared. Remember that if it is a circle and the radius is arrow, we will use arrow squared. But we have represented our radius here by L. That is why we are writing L squared. We define our L as the radius of the sector. Now, observe that our theta over 360 degrees times pi L squared is also equal to the area of the curved surface of the cone. The body that was folded to form the cone. You folded the sector to form the cone. That body, that sector, gives you the curved surface area of the cone. Now, our second point B is the length of arc ASB. The length of arc ASB. To find the length of arc ASB, you must recall that this is part of the circumference of the entire circle center zero. Now the circumference of the circular base of the cone, this same length of arc ASB is also equal to the circumference of the circular base of the cone. I said that earlier. The ASB is the one folded to form the base of the cone, which is a circle. Thus, our theta over 360 degrees times 2 pi L, which is the length of the arc ASB, is also equal to 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the base of the cone. In other words, our r is equal to theta l all over 360 degrees. This becomes our second formula which we are going to be using in solving problems related to sector and a cone. Hence, r over l is equal to theta all over 360 degrees. This is our third equation. When we now substitute the equation 3 in 1 above, where you have theta over 360, you now write r over a times pi r squared. Simplifying this gives you pi r o l. 
Hence, we say that the curved surface area, the curved surface area of a cone, curved surface area of a cone is equal to pi r o l. The curved surface area of a cone, we are talking about the folded body, the body that is folded without the base, which is circular. This is our equation number four. C. The total surface area of a cone, the total surface area of a cone, this will be equal to pi r o l plus pi r o squared. We can factorize this to give us pi r o into l plus r. We shall now take some examples on this area. But before then, we need to discuss a concept also related to solid measuration. And that is called the composite solid. Let us look at composite solids. A composite solid is made up of two or more solids. And for example, A, a cylinder and a cone. B, a cylinder, a cone and a hemisphere. C, a cube and a square based pyramid. Here are the diagrams illustrating the three examples above. We have here a cone and a cylinder. This is the cone and this is the cylinder. The cone is surmounted on the cylinder. The cylinder is the base of this composite solid. Because the solid is made up of more than one particular type of solid, we say the combination is a composite solid or a compound solid. Note that the radius of the cone and the radius of the cylinder, they are equal. The height of the cone, which is the vertical height of the cone, and then the height of the cylinder may be different. So A represents a cylinder and a cone. B, you have a cone surmounted on a cylinder and both are surmounted on a hemisphere. The top is the, uh, the cone. In between is the cylinder and the base is a hemisphere. This diagram representing a cone and cylinder and of course a hemisphere is a composite solid. C. A pyramid and a cube. You can see this as a cube and then the top is a pyramid. So this is a pyramid, a square based pyramid surmounted on a cube. We are particularly interested in the volume of the solid. However, we should be able to find the curved and total surface area as well. I must also mention here that these three are not the only composite solids we can have. A combination of a cone and a hemisphere will also form a composite solid. Let us now look at the formula for calculating the volume of the composite solids given above. A. Volume of a cone and cylinder. This should be equal to the volume of the cylinder, which is pi r square h, plus 1 over 3 pi r square h1. This is the volume of the cone. Now, observe here that the radius is the same. Pi is a constant. But H, which is the height of the cylinder and the cone, are different. This is the height of the cylinder. This is the height of the cone. In other words, we can also factorize this by bringing out pi r squared into h plus 1 over 3 h1. So, technically, it means to find the volume of a cone and a cylinder, take the formula for finding the 
area of a circle, then multiply it into the sum of the height of the cylinder and one third the height of the cone. I have explained here that our H and H1 are the heights of the cylinder and cone respectively. B. Volume of a cone, cylinder and hemisphere. Here is the volume of the cylinder and here is the volume of a cone and here is the volume of a hemisphere. Remember or recall that the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cube. Hemisphere is half of that. Hence, we have written here 2 over 3 pi r cube. This is the volume of a cone. And this is the volume of a cylinder. It does not really matter whether I have written cylinder, cone, or hemisphere. But cone, cylinder, and hemisphere, the formula for calculating their volume is the sum of the different volume of each of the uh, solids. Now, we can still factorize this to have a circle multiplying the height of the cylinder plus one third the height of the cone plus two over three the radius of the hemisphere. C. Volume of a pyramid and a cube. The volume of a pyramid is one third base area times height of that particular pyramid plus the volume of a cube which is L cube L times L times L equal to L cube and this gives you the volume of a pyramid and a cube we shall now go into examples of sector and a cone as well as the composite solids example number one a sector of a circle of radius 40 centimeters is folded into a cone of base radius 7 centimeters. If the base of the cone is closed, find the total surface area of the cone. The given part will be equal to 22 over 7. And you have the option A, 154 centimeters square, B, 308 centimeters square, C, 462 centimeters square, D, 562 centimeters square. Our solution. Let us sketch the sector. And here, this sector, center O, point A and B. And we are told in this case that the radius is 14, so we have 14 here. Then let's have our cone when it is folded. It's folded to form a cone. Now here is still 14, because that is the slant height of the cone, which is the radius of the sector. And then we have the radius of the base, and this is 7, the radius of the base. At seven. Okay. Our interest is to find the total surface area of what? Of the cone. Remember that if you are looking for the total surface area of the cone, you will find the area at the base, which is pi r squared, and then the area of the curved body, which is pi arrow a. This becomes pi arrow into arrow plus a when you factorize. Substituting the value given to you, pi is 22 over 7, the radius is 7 into 7 plus 14. This will give you 22 times 21 and that will become 22 times 1 is 22 
and 22 times 2 is 44. Add them, you have 2, you have 6, you have 4 centimeters square. And this is the total surface area of the cube. Therefore, the correct option is option C, 462 centimeters square. Example number two, a sector of a circle of radius 7.2 centimeters, which sustains an angle of 300 degrees at the center, is used to form a cone. What is the radius of the base of the cone? Option A, 6 centimeters. B, 7 centimeters, C, 8 centimeters, and D, 9 centimeters. Our solution is, let's sketch the sector and then the cone. Here we have and this angle subtended at the center is 300 degrees. Here is 7.2 the radius, 7.2 the radius, and this one is folded to form a cone. We have a cone because the arc, the length of, because of the length of the arc, you cannot have the base the way it is. Now you have this. This is the radius. The radius is equal to what? Now. We know that the radius R is theta L all over 360 degrees. This means our theta is the angle subtended at the center 300 degrees. Multiplying L, L is the radius of, of course, this is 7.2 as well. L is the radius of the sector, which is the slant height of the cone. So we now L here is equal to 7.2 and then all over 360 degrees. You simplify this, our 0 we cancel, and then our 6 we cancel 36, 6 we cancel 30 is 5, and 6 we cancel 6 1, 6 we cancel this, you have 1.2, therefore we have 5 times 1.2, and that will be equal to 6.0 centimeters. So the radius of the base of the cone is 6 centimeters. Therefore, the correct option is option A, 6 centimeters. Example number 3. A round circular cone of height 3 centimeters and slant height of 5 centimeters is surmounted on a cylinder of height 9 centimeters. Find the curved surface area of the composite figure formed. Option A, 92 pi centimeters square. B, 56 pi centimeters square. C, 51 pi centimeter square D 48 pi centimeter square Solution You will notice that in this question pi is not given to you so we will find the solution in terms of pi First and foremost let us look at the shape being described we have A cone and it's of height and it has a radius and the height here is three centimeters the slant height is five centimeters so you can find the radius then we also have the cylinder the cone is surmounted on the cylinder and the height of the cylinder is nine centimeters of course, the radius of the cylinder is also R. Using Pythagoras theorem, using Pythagoras theorem or rule, we can find our R. An R square is equal to five squared minus three squared, and that is twenty-five minus nine, and that will give us sixteen. So that your radius R is the square root of sixteen. And that is equal to 4. Therefore, our core surface area will be equal to pi ROL, which is the core surface area of the cone, plus 
2 pi ROH, which is the curved surface area of the cylinder. In other words, we can have this as pi R into L plus 2H. Now substituting our pi is unchanged. Our radius is 4. The dot here is multiplication into our L and our L here is the slant height of the cone which is 5 plus 2 times the height of the cylinder which is 9. Now this will give you 4 pi into 5 plus 18 and the result of this is 4 pi into 5 plus 18 is 23 multiplying this out 4 times 23 times pi and then your result will be equal to 12 8 and that is 9 pi centimeter square this corresponds to option A so the correct option, the correct option is A, which is 92 per centimeter square. Example number four. A solid consists of a hemisphere, radius three centimeters, surmounted by a right circular cone of height six centimeters. Find the volume of the solid. Option A, 18 per centimeters cube. B, 36 per centimeters cube. C, 54 per centimeters cube. D, 108 per centimeters cube. Solution. Let's sketch the figure. We have here a cone. And it has a height. Call it H and it has a radius. Call it R. And then we have a hemisphere from the center to this point is also the radius. This is the composite figure we have. Here yeah, our H is equal to 6 centimeters and our radius is equal to 3 centimeters. To find our volume, we find the volume of the cone, which is 1 over 3 pi R square H. Then we also find the volume of the hemisphere, which is 2 all over 3 pi R Q. We can factorize this 1 over 3 pi R squared into H plus 2 times R. Substituting the values, we have 1 over 3 times pi times R squared, and our R is 3, R squared, into H, which is 6, plus 2 again times R, and that is 3. Let me remove the dot or the, 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 the point so that many of us will not think that uh, that is a decimal point. So let us multiply this. This is actually a multiplication. Okay. Now, you can see that the 3 will cancel one of the 3 here, the many 3 times pi, open the bracket, 6, and 2 times 3 is 6, close the bracket. This becomes 3 times pi, and then times 12. 3 times 12 is 36, and then times pi, centimeters cubed. So the correct option is option B. Option B.